Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with an infinite radical expression or an infinite radical equation. So we have the square root of x times the square root of x squared times the square root of x cubed times the square root of x to the fourth, so on and so forth. Hopefully you get the pattern and the whole thing equals three. So we, we kind of have an expression that converges because when we have an infinite radical, infinite fraction, any type of infinite expression, we should be able to express it as a sequence and that sequence needs to converge so that we have a finite value. In this case, we are already given three and we're gonna be solving for x values. I said values because who knows, maybe there's more than one, right? Let's find out. So to be able to solve this problem, by the way, we did similar problems before. Hopefully you'll remember this pattern. This is a really nice way to approach things. And you could probably modify this problem, change these powers up a little bit to get a different type of problem. So think about this x here. It's x to the first power. So it's under one radical. So we have square root of x. And I can write it as x to the power 1 half, right? Great. What about the x squared? It's actually under two radicals, this one and this one. So it kind of gives us the square root of the square root, which is what? The square root of the square root of x squared. And that's actually x to the power 2 over 4, which you can write, in most cases, as x to the power one half. Of course, you have to be careful here because if you think about it, whenever you have something like negative one to the power two over four, how do you define that, right? Is it negative one squared and then the fourth root of that, which is actually one in real case. But if you simplify it, you're gonna get the square root of negative one, which is actually not real. You see, you gotta be very careful while simplifying these kinds of expressions. But in this case, we're just gonna assume that X is positive. If x isn't positive, then we kind of run into a problem here, right? You notice that? And then the third one is the square root of the square root of the square root of x cubed. So let's write it with nested radicals. Square root of the square root of the square root of x cubed. So whenever you have third power, you have three radicals. Get the idea? That's how it's uh, formed. And this can be written as x to the power 3 over 8 because the square root of the square root of the square root of something can be written as something to the power one over eight. And the reason for that is, this is basically the same thing as x cubed to the power one half, to the power one half, to the power one half. And we multiply these numbers to get one over eight. Make sense? So what do you see? You do see three different powers so far. One of them is this one. And by the way, you don't wanna simplify this because it's just gonna mess up the pattern. You'll see in a little bit. So let's keep these as is and then kind of plug these in. Now, what I'm trying to say here is, we have this, but I can kind of write it like this. Square root of x times the square root of the square root of x squared times the square root of the square root of the square root of x cubed, so on and so forth. It's a lot easier because now we have a product, we don't have nested radicals like crazy. So now, we already know this is x to the power one half, this is x to the power two fourths, now, if you simplify, you're going to get the same thing as you did, but that's not going to help it because the third term is entirely different. And this is going to continue forever. And eventually it's going to equal three, hopefully, right? Now, by using properties of exponents, if you multiply two or more powers with the same base, you add the exponent. So this is going to equal x to the power one half plus two fourths plus three eighths plus four over 16, so on and so forth and eventually equals three. Make sense? Great. So now the next question then is to evaluate what this power is gonna look like, because to me, that looks like an infinite series. Actually, that looks like an infinite geometric series, except the numerators are constantly increasing. If they weren't, suppose I had, on the other hand, one half plus one fourth plus one eighth, this would be geometric, infinite geometric series. And for this particular value, it would converge. Because remember, when you have something like this, it converges if the absolute value of r is uh, less than one, which means it's between negative one and one, right? And zero is included. So in this case, we have one half, which is good. Well, our expression is not in that form, but we can make it work. So th consider the following, one half plus one fourth 
plus one eighth, and I could probably just add another one, throw it in there for free, and consider this. What is that equal to? Now the formula is a sub one over one minus r. So if anytime you have something like this, a plus a r plus a r squared, dot, 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 we can kind of write it as a times 1 over 1 minus r or a over 1 minus r. This is the formula for the sum of an infinite geometric series, whenever it converges, of course. r needs to be on this interval. And r does. So, how do we handle this? We can go ahead and write it as a, which is the first term, divided by 1 minus 1 half, which is r. So Great, so we found the first sum, but that's not what we have, but we can do something like this. Start the next sum at one fourth and continue in the same manner and kind of shift the term so that they are nicely aligned. And we do have a sum for this, don't we? Again, it's going to be a one, the first term, divided by one minus one half, right? The next series we're going to write starts with one over eight and then we'll continue in the same manner. And that's actually going to equal to 1 over 8 divided by 1 minus 1 half. And this pattern will continue. And notice that this is going to give us what we need. 1 half, 2 over 4, 3 over 8, 4 over 16, so on and so forth, right? Obviously, this is what we need. So we're going to be adding these up. Now notice that since the denominator is always 1 half, we can kind of take that out. So kind of like 1 over one half, which is a two. So we can kind of pull out a two there. And inside, we're going to have these numbers, one half, one fourth, one eighth, and it's just going to go on forever. So we're basically factoring out the common factor, which is a two, and this is going to be our sum. But remember, this is just the exponent, right? So what is that going to give us? That's going to give us two times. Now this one is one half divided by one minus one half. This is one half. This is one half, so that's going to be one, and the product is going to equal two. Make sense? Okay, great. So the exponent right here, this is the series we were trying to evaluate, and we were hoping that it would converge because x to the power of that is convergent. So we have now x squared equals three. And remember what we said about x. Can x be negative? Think about it. Uh, that's something to think about. And what happens if it's negative, right? So x equals square root of 3 is a solution. Uh, that's what we were looking for. And basically, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.